This video is brought to you by Ageless Geeks. Cowabunga, dudes and dudettes! This is Anthony, aka BatBomb82, and today I'll be doing a review of the Mezco 112 Collective Thor Ragnarok Incredible Hulk. Now, taking a look at the front, we can see that the figure is showcased in your standard 112 box with the Thor Ragnarok emblem at the center. Turning the box around, we can see multiple images of the Hulk in multiple posing positions with his different interchangeable parts and accessories. So with the box out of the way, let's crack this figure open and see what we have inside. And here is the Hulk out of the box. And man, this is one beefy action figure from Mezco. He is very well done and the first larger scale figure that we're getting from the 112 line. He has amazing sculpt, beautiful paint apps, and some really cool accessories. Now that's not to say he doesn't have some problems, which he does. The articulation does lack, and some of the colors are off on his hands and his feet and his head. Other than that, I can really look past those things because he is just one impressive looking figure in person, and I am super stoked to add him to the collection. But before we take a closer look at the figure, let's take a look at the accessories. So the Hulk does come with a good amount of accessories. Starting off, he comes with two interchangeable head sculpts, a hammer, an axe, and six interchangeable hands. And lastly, he also comes with a circular base stand with a Thor Ragnarok emblem printed at the top. He also comes with a clear articulated arm that articulates at four points with a clip. So with the accessories out of the way, let's take a look at the Incredible Hulk. All right guys, now let's take a closer look at the Incredible Hulk. Now this is a really cool action figure. Now I know people have some problems with this and uh, I can totally understand that I get where they're coming from. Uh, but for some people, those issues may not exactly be a problem. Uh, the articulation does lack, I will say that right off the bat. Uh, and things that probably bug me the most is the hands, the feet, and the head are a slightly different tone of green than the actual torso and whatnot. Um, but I'll be honest, it does, it's more noticeable in pictures and when this figure is in hard, uh, harsh lighting. Uh, but just like holding it in hand into the naked eye, for me, it's not that noticeable. So I, that was probably my biggest gripe when I first saw pictures. Uh, but in hand, it's really not an issue to me. So I'm enjoying this figure for what it is and it's freaking cool, man. I love this piece. The sculpting is ridiculous. It's so good. So very well done. I mean, the helmet, look at the helmet on that is just so nicely done. All those nicks and scratches and paint wear and whatnot look nice. The hawk on that helmet just looks great. See that big gash right across the helmet right there just looks so, so good. I love this piece. This shoulder pauldron is really nice. That nice metallic blue looks really good. I wish I had a little more like paint wear instead of just this solid blue. Uh, but that is accurate to the movie. And I've seen in other figures uh, that that color of that pauldron is this is more accurate than uh, some of the other Hulk figures that I've seen. Like I said, just wish I had a little more wear to it. But the straps, these are all separate pieces. They're all separate, like little pieces attached. So you probably could take those off if you really wanted to and took this figure apart. But the sculpting in that is insane. Look at all the nicks and scratches and dirt and whatnot. I love the paint detailing of the tattoos. That metallic silver just looks fantastic. Sculpting of his gauntlets and his hands just look really nice. This whole side armor right here just looks really good. The paint in the in the sculpting man is where this figure really really shines. I like that a ton. The sculpting is just so well done. Uh, there's even like a texture to his skin you can kind of see in the uh, torso right there all throughout the body which is really nice. The feet look great. The sandals 
all the paint deal, even the purple, and then the straps and whatnot, and the sandals, his big Hulk batas right there look really cool. Man, I love that. No texture on the bottom right here, but he does have peg holes. Just looks really good. What I'm very like stoked on is this whole loincloth piece, with the exception of the belt right here. This is all soft goods material, and the attention to detail in this is very well done. The fact that that's all cloth. Those are like individual cut pieces and whatnot, and strips, and patterns, and textures. That's all cloth material. That's really cool. I don't think we've ever seen something like that, uh, this like, structured and detailed, with uh, fabric like this in this scale of figure. I don't think. But that looks freaking awesome. I absolutely love that. Big Hulk and back just looks really cool. Man, aesthetically, this figure is amazing. He's just so very well done and I'm, I'm, it makes me super stoked to get uh, what do you call it? the uh, Thor figure from this line so that's going to be awesome having these guys side by side so very very cool uh, so we do get some really cool accessories uh, so we do get some interchangeable hands uh, we do get some closed fisted hands those are the ones that come packaged in the box uh, we do get a pair of gripping hands those are the ones for holding his weapons like his axe and his hammer uh, and then we do get some open palm hands those are just more like action poses and things like that and I actually really like those quite a bit so how the hands work uh, they are just on your standard pegs uh, nice thick pegs too with these uh, the hands are a little softer and I love how Mezco actually makes their hands uh, things like the, the wristbands and this whole armor thing right here are separate pieces, so those might fall off on you uh, as you're like uh, interchanging parts and whatnot. Uh, even this little blue strap right here, uh, this is actually cloth material right there. Uh, so you kind of have to wrap that piece around there. I notice it does move around when you're posing and whatnot, so you just have to tuck it back in there, and it's pretty. It, it works out pretty well. Uh, so he does have some weapons. So we do got this axe right here. This is very well done. I like that a ton. You can even see the texturing and the paint detailing. That some scratches and nicks, all just look very, very nice. I like that a ton. And then you got this big hammer. That's a nice weighted hammer. I love how you can even see like some orange in there to make it almost look like rust and whatnot. That is really cool. Man, I love this so much. The, the texturing on the grip right there. Just looks very nice. Oh my god, so so cool. So he does hold these pretty good. So I'm gonna take this hand off right here, uh, and then we can bring in one of the uh, gripping hands. This one right here, like that. Uh, and he does hold these pretty nice. Uh, since his hands are a little more pliable, you can get it in there fairly easily for the most part. Uh, and he can holds it very nice, and that's just that's cool, man. I love that so, so much. I do worry that over time, since the hands are a little more uh, pliable material, uh, that he might lose his grip over time. So that's just something to note. We also do get the stand right here with the Thor Ragnarok emblem. That is, my my opinion, the best Thor movie that's been made. Uh, again, I love the Mezco stands with the articulated arm and whatnot. Uh, we also do get two interchangeable heads. So we get the standard head right here. Uh, this is the one that comes packaged in the box. This one comes with the helmet and whatnot, and more uh, yelling. Again, with that sick mohawk, that helmet is just ridiculously cool. And I love the fact that even in the mouth, uh, you get like a clear gloss paint to like, make it look like his mouth is actually wet and whatnot. Just looks so, so nice. I dig that a ton. And then we do get this unhelmeted head, which is more of the gritting teeth. You can see his hair, the texture on the hair looks really nice. Uh, and you get a better look at the paint detailing with like the silver tribal markings uh, over his eye and whatnot. That just looks great. So the heads just pop off like so. They're just on a ball peg like that. And you could take this one right here and pop that on like so, and that works out great. And here you can kind of a little more tell uh, where the green is a little more different than the uh, actual torso itself. But still, again, to the naked eye, I don't notice it all that much. Um, it's it's really not that noticeable. Uh, but still, the sculpting of that, I think, is where this really shines. Just looks fantastic. And that silver marking across the face just looks really, really cool. So I'm going to take that off, and I really want to put this helmet back on because I think that's where I'm going to most likely uh, display this piece. So very, very cool. All right, so now I want to take a look at the articulation here. So uh, again, it is minimal. I, I understand that people are, are, aren't are too happy with that, but 
you know, I could, I get that, and uh, it does not bother me for this for particular figure, and it really doesn't bother me with Mezco figures, period, because for me, Mezco figures are more about the aesthetics and whatnot, and I know they say hyper-posing and things like that, which is, that's totally not true, you know what I mean, the only, the only toys I think are hyper-posable are like Rebel Tech and whatnot, but anyways, so, the head is on a ball joint, it does roll around a bit, it is going to be hindered because of the helmet, since this piece tends to hit the back of the neck and things like that so it is hindered does rotate like so can move up and down a little bit uh, the unhelmeted head would move up and down a little more the arms can go full 360 uh, this one's going to be hindered by the shoulder pad right here the pauldron a bit but you can still get some pretty good motion out of it like so we only get a single bend at the elbows, uh, so it only goes about that far. Uh, that's something that I wish they would have done, especially being a bulkier figure. Uh, they could have done a double jointed, which would have looked pretty decent still. Uh, it is a little disappointing that this doesn't even go 90 degrees, uh, but still okay for certain poses, but I understand why people would want more. It also rotates at the elbow like so. We got rotation at the wrist as well as a hinge at the wrist like so, so that works out very nice. Uh, no uh, ab crunch or anything like that. I kind of wish they had a cut right here below the pecs so you get a little more motion, but we do got a ball peg right here at the waist, so that rolls around like so, does turn left and right, pivot side to side, and crunch forward probably about, eh, let's see, so we're about right here, uh, say about that much. Ah. It popped off, which, you know, isn't great. It's something, uh, but I would do wish we can get a little more. We got hip joints that kick forward about that far back. Not so much because we got a big fat green booty. Can do the splits. Freaking really nice, surprisingly. I love that he actually has cloth underwear. I think that's incredibly funny, incredibly cool. So that's really nice attention to detail. We got rotation at the upper thigh. We got a single bend at the knee. Uh, and just notice how they designed this knee joint. So this is one whole piece and it kind of covers up that gap a bit. And it bends uh, just below 90, but still pretty good for the most part, I think. We also does rotate at that knee. Uh, no, it does not, no rotation at the knee. I kind of thought it did. But it rotates at the ankle, ankles go up and down, and a slight ankle rocker. So overall, I do like this figure quite a bit. I understand why everybody might not like it, especially for the price point. I think it's probably the biggest issue. You know, it is a gorgeous figure, I will say that. I think it's beautifully executed as far as the sculpting goes and the paint goes. And I, I'm really stoked to have this in my collection. I just think he's very, very cool. The paint apps, man, just are so awesome. I love the detailing and all this and whatnot. So, uh, you know, let me know what do you guys think. If it's worth, you know, $125, I think that's what it retail was. I can understand, again, I understand why most people think it's not worth it because of the lack of articulation and things like that. I personally love it. I think he's very cool, and I'm super stoked to add him to the collection. So for a quick size comparison, here he is standing next to a Marvel Legends Deadpool figure, as well as a DCUC Batman figure. And for your Mezco comparison, here he is standing next to the Mezco 112 Collective Armor 42 Iron Man and Popeye figures. Also for comparison, here he is standing next to the 112 Collective Judge Dredd and Aquaman figures. And just for fun, here he is standing next to a little Lego Bat Bomb. So there it is guys, my review of the Mezco 112 Collective Thor Ragnarok Incredible Hulk. Now overall, I can totally understand why some people will get a little turned off by things like the lack of articulation. And yes, his head, hands, and feet are slightly off-colored with the green of the torso. But still, aesthetically pleasing, this figure is so very well done. Mezco has done a great job with the sculpt and the paint. The detailing on this beast is incredibly well done, no pun intended. He is truly badass, and I am totally stoked to add him to the Mezco shelf. So I give this figure a rating of... 4 Bat Bombs... Out of 5. And if you're on Facebook, head over to my group, the Mezco 112 Collective Collectors, for all kinds of Mezco goodness. So please comment, like, and subscribe. Stay nerdy, my friends. 
Peace.